This program has been made possible by the National Endowment for the Humanities, expanding America's understanding for more than 30 years of who we were, who we are, and who we will be. She had riveting blue eyes and a deep voice. She smoked cigarettes and talked tough. She broke every barrier society put in her path. She wanted to be like Dickens. She wanted to be like Virgil. She wanted to be as big as the big guys. Willa Cather wrote some of the most unforgettable fiction of the 20th century. A book is made with one's own flesh and blood of years, she said. It is cremated youth. It is all yours. No one gave it to you. She had none of the connections. She had none of the resources. She made her world. She made these things happen. She was almost 40 years old when she wrote her first novel. It was, in her own opinion, a failure. She found her voice as a writer only when she had the courage to face what frightened her the most. Out of her earliest memories came her first great books, O Pioneers, The Song of the Lark, My Antonia. And what really counts in the long run is the feeling it leaves you with, that feeling that you have about the book, My Antonia. 10 years after you've read it, you can still feel that. Willa Cather won the Pulitzer Prize and became one of the best-selling writers in America. But as her fame grew, she became ever more reclusive, sharing her secrets only with the few she trusted. Before her death, she burned most of her letters. She asked her friends to do the same. I want no pictures made, I want no movies made, I want no letters kept, and uh, she had all these requests. Cather felt that her, her life belonged to her and her work belonged to the people. And you know what? She was right. I'm interested in her life. I want to read. I want to know. I do want to know. But, but it's not my right. The end is nothing, Willa Cather said. The road is all. We find the story of her life in the pages of her books. The snow spilled out of heaven, like thousands of feather beds being emptied. In the crowded clutter of their cave, the old man had come to believe that peace and order had vanished from the earth, or existed only in the old world he had left so far behind. In her novel, My Antonia, Willa Cather tells a dark tale of the frontier, a story of despair and a dugout on the plains. The scene haunted her because the frontier was the transforming experience of her life. She was born into a very different world, a settled world of trees and valleys and a long family history. In her last novel, she shared one of her first memories. I was in my mother's bedroom in the third story of a big old brick house entered by a white portico with fluted columns. Propped up on high pillows, I could see the clouds drive across the bright, cold blue sky, throwing rapid shadows on the steep hillsides. Willa Cather was born in 1873 in Back Creek, Virginia. Cather's mother was a spirited woman who disciplined her children with a rawhide whip. Her father made little leather shoes for his favorite sheepdog so it wouldn't cut its feet on the rocks. She was named Willella after her father's sister, but everyone called her Willie. She was the first child in her mother and father's family and the first female grandchild, I think, in the larger family. And she was incredibly pampered. Everybody did everything for her. Being born so soon after the Civil War meant that she was also 
born into um, a very um, intense mythology. Willa Cather's family was split in two by the war. Her uncles had fought for the South, but her grandmother had helped a slave to escape, and her grandfather was a Union sympathizer who prospered after the war. As a result, the Cathers were not popular with their neighbors. One winter, their sheep barn caught fire under suspicious circumstances. She stood there and watched the barn burn, and she heard what it sounded like for these animals to die. Cather's grandparents had already left Virginia for the Great Plains. When they heard about the fire, they begged Cather's parents to leave Virginia, or the house would be next. In 1883, the Cather family set out for Nebraska. Those who went west weren't just going in order to find the promised land, they were also leaving something, intentionally leaving something behind. 